All right, we are live. Welcome back again. All right, what did we study about last week in Psalms chapter 7? Psalms chapter 7. Relay. Um, David was praying that he'd be delivered from his enemies. And at the end of that part of it, he said, see that. Which I've heard that's translated, think about that, or amen. It, Yes, it, it's more also of a, of a musical refrain. It is, it is, it is. If you were to look at musical nomenclature, uh, like notes and stuff like that, it would be the the symbol that means to rest when you when you're playing. It's it is it is a moment of silence. Yes, Sister Donna. Yeah, yes, that that was the 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 biggest thrust of what we talked about is David's request for judgment. A different idea than what we talked about in a lot of the other, uh, the earlier psalms from this same book is where, where he's asking for mercy, he's asking for the, you know, stay of punishment and all this stuff. And in this one, he specifically asked for judgment because he knew where he stood. Um, anybody else? We discussed that word Cush. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, we, we talked about Cush the Benjaminite. Um, and. Obviously, there's another Cush mentioned in the scriptures, not not the same guy, um, but that this, from all the commentaries and stuff that I've looked at, that this was probably a relative of Saul's. Um, anything else? Which will bring us to Psalms chapter 8. Today's lesson, we're going to do something a little bit different. Typically... We just go through the psalm and we just try to uh, to uh, glean uh, glean something from it. But there is there's some stuff in here that I, I I thought was unique, and what I'm about to present may be something that everybody else has has seen but me. But I enjoyed looking at it, and and if you have seen it, you'll enjoy the review. Um, the uh, um, First verse of some, I'm actually probably just going to read through the entire chapter, and then we're going to go and we're going to look at look at some different things. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou adorned, the, uh, adorned strength because of thine enemies, that thou might, uh, mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast, cr and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and beasts of the field, the fowls the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea O Lord our Lord how excellent is thy name in all the earth a familiar psalm and if you're not really if you don't read the psalms a lot the words still may be familiar because they're echoed again in Hebrews um, eventually I think it's Hebrews chapter 2 and we're going to get there in a minute um, and talk about this but the, the words are echoed there and um, this psalm has really two different things that you can think about. You can talk, think about it from a, a prophecy standpoint. This is talking significantly about Jesus. And then we can also, we can also look at it as a, a study in what we lost as humanity whenever we uh, fell, in, fell in Eden. Now, if you ask anybody... When when Adam sinned, when when Eve sinned in the garden, what did we lose? And and a lot of people would come up with a lot of different things. The probably the highest would be our our perfection, our soul. Our, our, we we gained, if you want to call this a gain, we gained a sin nature. We gained 
uh, a fallen nature. But what else did we lose outside of that? And I think this psalm actually addresses something unique that I always had just kind of read past in a lot of different places. And I want to look at all of this today. And this we'll probably just blast right through this and be done early, but maybe then you can get a nice uh, Sunday evening nap. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 1 real quick. Genesis chapter 1. The first chapter of Genesis, I think everybody here uh, knows that is is a overview of the creation of the world. Chapter two goes into a little bit more about the creation of man, and then chapter three is the fall. At the end of chapter one, and where we're ultimately going to pick up our 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 reading in verse twenty six, we finally get to God's creation of man, of mankind. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, so in the image in, the, in, the, in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which... Uh, in the which is the fruit of a tree, yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, uh, there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, the a lot of people like to talk about man as the crowning jewel of creation, but really, man was who the other five days of creation was for. Man, man, man we're, we're, we, weren't, we weren't just another byproduct of God's infinite creativity. We were, we were who he designed it all for in the first place. Um, Eden, specifically, and if you read chapter 2, and we're not going to read that, but if you read chapter 2, Eden specifically was a perfect place for God to commune with the with his perfect creation, with the person that he made it for, it was it was it was infinitely perfect. And I've said this many times: the entire scripture from 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 the fall, Genesis chapter three, all the way to you get to Revelation chapter twenty-two, is the Lord correcting man's mistake to return us to Eden. This is where He designed us to be in perfect accord. And, per, and able to walk literally physically with the Lord our God in a perfect place. Now, in addition to this, and this is why I also say that we're not the crowning jewel of creation, because if you place us, I mean, he did create us. Don't, give, don't get me wrong as I say this, but if you place us along with the other creations, you come to a place where you might start fall prey victim to some of the scientific I, I ideology that comes with evolution and that type where we are equal with animals instead of being above them. Specifically here, if you look at verse 26, he says, Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. We are given to be the, the caretakers of the planet. But we lost this. And this is an idea that I had never quite thought about before, but we gave this up. Now let's move to chapter 3 very quickly, and we're going to read a good section of chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now I am fully aware, and me and Jared actually had this conversation about, what, three weeks ago? About about the devil in the garden, it is definitely alluded to in scriptures, if not outright said, that Satan was speaking through the serpent. But the serpent was an animal, nonetheless. Doesn't matter who was behind it, the serpent was the creature that 
in chapter in, in the first chapter of Genesis we had dominion over. He approaches Eve and he says, and I'm going to paraphrase a lot of this chapter because I don't want us to get bogged bogged down in stuff that we've already read. We'll get to some of it in a minute. But the serpent basically offers this idea that God didn't want us to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because in the day that you do, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, which wasn't untrue. That was not an untrue statement. See, the devil offered a temptation with a modicum of truth in it. Now, what Eve did not realize is this temptation is mirrored very close in the New Testament. This temptation is the devil attempting to usurp power given to man. We're going to see where else he tries to do this because the devil wants to leapfrog his way to the top. Now, he's doing this through, through the serpent, and, and, and the woman said, well, we're going to, we're going to skip, skip that. Let's see. Um, for uh, Verse 6, And the woman saw the tree that it was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. And she took the uh, of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband he did eat, and the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they and they sued themselves together, and made them. Uh, they, I'm sorry, and they sued fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees. Now, this is what I was getting to, uh, saying that the devil wasn't, untru- wasn't wasn't untrue with his statement. It did open their eyes. It put a little piece of God's ability to say what is right and what is wrong. This is essentially the law. Adam and Eve were not guilty. Were, were actually the only human beings ever to exist to be not guilty of sins they were actively committing. We're not supposed to be naked. We're not supposed to be. We're not. So, we're, we're not supposed to be just running around in the woods like apes. With, with, with no clothes on and no care of whether we'll ever find a stitch of clothing. But Adam and Eve were able to do it. Why? Because they, they legitimately did not know any better. And God had seen fit for them to exist like this. God had seen fit. We're not, we're not going to worry about it. But the minute they did, they became aware of their condition. They became aware of all the factors that played in, into this thing. And that's why also I think one of the big things that we're forever, nobody is not guilty of the law. Because all of us know, if you look at every single culture, you can look at even some of the worst ones out there. If you steal something, there's punishment for it. Why? Because everybody knows it's wrong on a very base and fundamental level to take something that someone else has. It's wrong. And why is that? That's not because Everybody is handed a copy of the Bible and, or the Ten Commandments and says, hey, you know, thou shalt not steal. No, that's just because we know intrinsic, and that's this. That is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Tell it, and so by that, a lot of our moral laws, man's laws, seek to rectify what we can't control within ourselves. Moving on. Um... And the Lord God called unto Adam and said, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who has told thee thou was naked? And hast thou eat of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? God says, Who told you you weren't naked? He, he, he doesn't address the, the conundrum of who is at fault. He said, Who told you you was naked? And did you eat of the fruit? It was Adam's fault. No matter who who was who was involved, and we're fixing to get to man's favorite game that he loves to play, and that's the blame game. Uh, <laughs> it's it, it's not my fault. It's Eve's fault. And Eve says it's not my fault. It is the serpent's fault. Now the big thing I want to pull away from this whole thing, and we'll get we can, we can you can go and read the rest of the chapter yourself. I'm sure everybody here has a dozen times. And you know how this ends. God punishes every member, that every party that is involved with this transaction in kind. Of the serpent, he is basically to go upon his belly for the rest of his days. Of the, of the woman, pain and childbearing. Every horrible, horrible moment, and I've stood by my wife through two of them, every horrible moment of childbearing is based directly on your mother Eve. Sorry, that's how it is. And for man, curse the ground. Nothing that we do, I can I can work my hands raw 
cutting hair, and it doesn't matter how hard I do it, it's never going to yield to me everything that I, everything that I need. It's impossible. Every farmer that's ever ever tilled the ground, your crops are never going to grow to the fullest of their tent, and it's 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 ingrained in the fabric of the universe. Now, it's literally a inner a a, a law of nature is that you're just not going to get back the work that you put back into it. Now, in all of this, though, Adam and Eve submitted to the one thing that they had dominion over, which is what? A snake. They submitted to the idea from this serpent, and I believe that they gave up their dominion over the garden. How do I know this? Because if we go, let's jump over to, I forget where I wrote now, Luke. Let's go to the temptation of Christ. And this is where I said that it was kind of mirrored. This temptation in the garden is kind of mirrored again in the New Testament. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, the temptation of Christ, one of the more famous uh, passages of Scripture where the devil is actually having a, uh, an actual discourse with Christ. And we're going to go to uh, to verse uh, 5. Uh, he's already offered him the bread. Turn the stones into bread and it'll be, you know, they'll be, and you can eat and the Lord said, It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but every word uh, of God. Verse 5 says, And the devil take him up, taketh him up unto an high mountain, and shoot him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory for them, for, it, for that is delivered unto me, and to whosoever I will give it. Now, where did the devil get this power? The devil stole it. See, this power is a Greek word in the New Testament. The dominion from the Old Testament, but both carry the word of authority. When we fell, we gave up our authority. It is within the devil, the devil's complete ability to do everything he says here. Again, mirroring the exact temptation that Adam had in the in, everything he's saying is correct. I had it. The power it was given to me. And I can give it up to whoever I will. But what is the cost here? Now, the devil is about, is trying to perform, again, like I said, a little leapfrog here. He wants to go from just having dominion over what man was given to, the, to dominion over everything that God has. See, through, with Jesus Christ having God, being God, having that part of him in there, he had every, it, it was, I mean, if you look, all things were made by him without anything was made that was not made. Everything, the very fabric of reality was the power that Je Jesus held. Now, if Jesus had submitted the way that we had, this would have been the devil's direct fast track to godhood, to, to literally you, the one thing that he's always coveted. Because through submission, through saying, yes, you are, but this is an e this was an easy road. This was an easy road. And Jesus completely rejects this. If, you, if, we, if we read on, it says, and Je uh, um, um, if, that is it, verse seven, if that will worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said to him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, the devil does not get his due, this was a opportunity for the Lord to basically gain back one of the things that he gets. Now, I, I, I want to go, the, Jesus was going to regain that everything which man had lost. Right. One of his, I mean, uh, among the numerous missions and prophecies and everything that Jesus has accomplished with his perfect life here on the earth, with the salvation of his people, with, you know, the, the, the completion of the law in a perfect and, 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 and mighty fashion, uh, with, uh, with everything he did, regaining the dominion uh, from Satan was one of the things that he could do. How do I know this? Well, if you look at this power, if you look at this verse here, and then we go over to, um, where did I write it down at? Let's go to, well, let, let's read, um, let's read Hebrews real quick. And this is the verse I was, Hebrews chapter 2. Got ahead of my notes a little bit here, but let's let's make sure that we hit all the all the finer points here. Hebrews uh, chapter two, in verse six. But one, 
no, verse, verse two, chap, chapter two, verse six. Um, but one in a certain place testifying, saying, "What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man thou visitest him?" This is from Psalms. Uh, thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he putteth all subjection under him, he left nothing that is put under him. But we, but now we see him, not yet all things uh, put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the by the grace of God he should taste death for every for every man, for it became him for whom all from for whom are all things. And by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, and to make the captain, uh, and to make the captain of their salvation perfect through their suffering. So Jesus went back. See, if you look at Psalms, we don't really hold every that that. If you read it in the context of it's man that he's talking about there, we don't hold everything does. But Jesus went back, and he it's prophecy. He went back, and he fulfilled all that. And what did he get in? Um, in return, let's go to uh, let's let's go to Matthew chapter twenty-eight, and this is this is the clincher on the regaining of man's uh, 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 or of his dominion. Um, Matthew chapter twenty-eight. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. And lo, I am with you all way, even to the end of the world. Amen. Now, Jesus, in verse 18 of this chapter, basically, in not so many words, states that that power, if you look all the way back to Luke and even further back, uh, in fact, the business, um, uh, during uh, Brother Kenny's uh, sermon this morning, he, 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 in Daniel, it talks about him regain, it, getting dominion uh, back. That's That dominion there is the Chaldean word of the same word that's in Hebrews, and the power here is the Greek word of the same word in Chaldean and Hebrew, which means that as a perfect sacrifice as a perfect man as a per, as a, a perfect the only perfect human being he not only regained your soul and my soul he not only paid the price for sin he not only conquered death and hell and the grave he also re-rested control back of everything that we lost which is including which is the dominion that man was supposed to give him. That actually rests with God now. Now, can we gain that? I think that's why through faith it says that, you know, you can move mountains. Where does that come from? That doesn't come from you. Exactly. That comes from your faith in someone who can move them. Right. And why can he? Because the devil doesn't own that anymore. Amen. He rested that back from him. Now, it was a tougher path. If you look at Luke, and he was offering an easy, easy road for him to take. You can do most of what you want to do if you just kneel. It's the same thing that he offered Adam and Eve in Eden. Do you want to be like God? You won't, you won't die right away. <laughs> it's, not, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. Yeah. And for Adam and Eve, fallible human creatures close enough was close enough and we gave it all up now jesus he re-rested control so when we when we and, and i think this go we've been talking a lot about faith in this classroom especially since we've got back since we started studying psalms we talk about faith we talk about uh, living faith the, the faith to just trust god to do the things that he says that he's going to do the things that he's promised he's, that he said we're not going to go hungry because you're always going to have everything you need right. not, not everything you want everything you need why are we so hesitant 
to get that. You literally t- trust him with the only one part of you. And I've said this mo- most m- many occasions. You, we trust, I say people, we trust him with the one part of us that we cannot do anything with ourselves. We literally lay everything. And, and most, most Christians say, I, and I will believe that till the day I die. And yet, for something as physical and as temporal as all the things around us, we, we seek to do it all ourselves. By our own power and by our own hand, we will survive on this plane of existence. When he literally did all the work where just simple faith in him takes care of not only spiritual things, it will take care of physical things. Because he paid that price. Jesus' death rested back so much of what we lost in Eden. It, and, and honestly, his, his completed work there is the final step. We're only just got time before everything rewraps back up look at the new heaven and new earth coming down but we will achieve eden again and jesus did all the work there but we just got to put faith in that we we just we we got to we have to trust that when things are looking bleak on the monetary front jesus got that he does have it. it 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 i always like the um was it george mueller the the orf uh, and and the story about the orphanage and, and and him praying over an empty table. That takes a lot of faith to say, I trust God enough that I'm going to say grace over food we don't have yet, because I know the Lord will provide it. Right. And He has the power to do it. He got it back. I know a shorter lesson and a, and a little bit different thought. Are there any questions, comments, concerns, um, beratement? Um, yes, yeah. Um, when, he, when he talks about the, the temptation in the garden, mm-hmm. that's what because God's knowing good from evil. That word knowing kind of carries with it the idea of having the ability to not only discern, but to decide. Mm hmm. the value of the Old Testament law. It tells us exactly how to exercise dominion in society. Mm-hmm. And we as believers, we're to seek to govern our lives, our families, and then it spreads out to our communities, our churches, in accordance with that law. Um, but Satan's temptation is, oh no, you don't need God's authority. You don't need God's law. You can create your own law. Yeah. And that that is the sin of mankind, yeah. is trying to live their life, to govern their lives, Apart from the authority of God. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what Jesus Christ restores when yep. he saves us. And he gives us the Holy Spirit and he writes the law upon the tables of our of our heart. And and then we exercise dominion in accordance with his law. I I love the I love that lesson. Yeah. It's so so helpful. It's it's an it's an it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting and like I said I'm I'm sure I'm sure it's no revelation to everybody, but I, I'd never I'd never thought about it in that sequential order that that G- Jesus regained back that that aspect of our the, uh, the, uh, of things that we that we lost there so so much in the fall that we don't we don't take account for um it, yes Bill Jarrett Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, e- e- again, even even in you know, look look at a, a a country. You talk about Brother Kenny said in his, about about believers in China, a country that actively disregards God in in at least politically speaking in every way that it can. Um, I bet they still have. I know they still have laws about theft and about murder and about and and, and why is that? Because Man, it left to, again, what Brother Kenny was saying, a deciding of what my law is for me, we will go awry very quickly. We, if, if we just trust that, that hind part of our brain, if you will, the, 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 the basis part of our desires, all bets are off then. If everything's just right in every man's own eyes. Jesus didn't say, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to you, go therefore. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'm going to pass it out right. as I see fit. <laughs> in his power, not our own. 
Yeah, right. Uh, it's you know, uh, and uh, again, in uh, we we read in jo- we we studied in Joshua, and we talked a lot about every at least in that in the early part that we read there. Not a single battle that Joshua won did not the Lord have a hand in. We don't have to swing a sword by ourselves. We just need to be present in the battle. Any other questions or comments? Well, yes. I, I think too what Adam and Eve were ineffective then, Christ was effective. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that that. It, it, I, if I, I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jesus is referred to as as a second Adam, li, 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 literally literally 2.0, a better version of that man. Um, Mm-hmm. And the command was, don't eat of that tree. <laughs> right. And One law. <laughs> yeah. And by, by us being in Adam, we're all covenant breakers. Mm-hmm. And so he established a new covenant, a more gracious covenant with Christ. And it was the same covenant. I'll give you all power in heaven and earth if you perfectly obey me. Mm-hmm. And Jesus Christ came and perfectly obeyed. From, 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 from birth to death. Yeah. Yep. Well, and you can see, too, that even in what they had, Adam couldn't effectively or truthfully pass the law down because he lied to Eve. He said, mm-hmm. either eat it or touch it. And that's not what God said. He said, don't eat it. Yeah. And so when she reached out and touched it, hey, I'm okay. Yeah. The, uh, I, well, and, and again, to reference Brother Kenny's message, he referred to Jesus as king. This is in one area that he is king. He holds everything down here. This, this, is, this, is, this is his domain because he perfectly lived it he did the thing he did the thing that we all failed to do um so you know i think the devil is effectual down here i think the devil still works down here but he only works as long as that chain around his neck will go and when when the old junkyard dog reaches the end of his chain he can bark he can snarl and he can sling spit but he ain't coming no further because he's anchored he's anchored to someone who's holding the other end of the chain um I'm not saying the devil isn't powerful, and if you got in on a junkyard dog that still had plenty of chain, you'd find out how, how strong he is, too. But the Lord sets up, I think the Lord, and if you look at Job, I think it's a perfect example. The Lord sets up opportunities for the devil to do th- stuff to us, and it is our place to show us how much like Christ we are. <laughs> how, 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 mu- how, how close to the razor edge can we, can we walk on this straight and narrow way and keep away from all the dangers that beset us on every, every side, and so often we fall off the edge. We find ourselves uh, right down in with the wolves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you can take everything he has, but don't take his yeah don't take his uh, don't take his life. Uh, yep. Any other questions, comments? All right, we will continue our study in Psalms next week, Psalms chapter nine. Everybody, be prepared for Brother Jarrett's class on Tuesday evening. Be studied. Be uh, be vigilant. I'm sure he'll come with some hard questions and yes, thought provoking commentary. Um, if there's no other questions or comments, we will be dismissed. You all have a great week. Thank you.